Carson Conant. I'm the CEO of MediaFly. So companies struggle with how to connect with buyers today. The buyers, particularly in B2B selling, the buyers have changed. Um, they do a lot more research online. It's much harder. You can't just show up and throw up, as we say, with a PowerPoint presentation. Sellers have to connect with buyers in a much more strategic and value-based way. So we provide a portfolio of solutions, everything from technology to advisory services. We provide applications that big companies can use to conduct their sales presentations. We help the salespeople uh, assemble the story rapidly, present, pivot on a dime, be much more interactive, much more engaging, all that in software. And then we, um, we provide the advisory services that kind of go along with that. Um, so real big companies will use us to literally transform the way they sell. So rather than walking in and pitching with PowerPoint, now they walk in, they pitch off of an app, it's highly interactive, much more engaging, much more dynamic. And at the end of the day, it's much more about a conversation about how I can articulate my value to you. I think I'm a great finder of awesome talent. So I'm not the typical, everybody follow me and we're, you know I have, the, I have the perfect vision to stick with me. Really what I feel like I, I do is find amazing gems and I convince them to join the company. And so it's just natural that I listen to them. Um, in some cases, you know, I feel like my job is kind of like a conductor. I need to get everybody kind of going in the same direction. And so I have a lot of really talented type A personalities that um, that can have conflicting opinions and that kind of stuff. So my job is really, I think, to try and pull out the consensus on where we should kind of go together. Um, I think the good and the bad is, um, I think sometimes people would love if I was to just say, this is exactly where we're going, everybody follow me. At the same time, I think I get, I, I've been able to bring in incredibly talented people because they get to have that entrepreneurial contribution. Um, you know, their, their voice is heard, and 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 we we change the direction of the company based on what this what this body of executives wants to do. One of the folks I worked with very early on at MediaFly, he kind of ingrained in me this philosophy that it's better to miss somebody good than to bring somebody who's the wrong fit. And so I've I've always just we've always kind of lived with that. And so we're so careful on who joins MediaFly. Um, we have had almost no regrettable turnover in all of my 12 years. Um, and I think part of that is too because we're, is because we're so careful to who comes in. And when that happens, when people come in that way, the, the confidence you have in the contribution they're gonna make, we also typically hire senior people. In a lot of cases, I've been trying to suck these people into the company for years. Um, we actually just hired a woman that I was probably working on for about two years. Um, we hired a guy that I've been working on for 10 years. And so when you have that kind of commitment to somebody, you know, once they once they come in, you're you're highly committed to making them happy, you know, keeping them there and, and making sure they they can really blossom inside the company. So the career path thing is actually a, an interesting challenge we're running to now. We're growing rapidly, but we're not growing fast enough for the amount of people that have joined the company. So we're starting to grow through both our organic growth, but also through uh, through acquisitions. And so we end up we end up now we're much bigger than we were 18 months ago. And so we haven't, we're just now having to start wrestling with what's the career path for these people inside of MediaFly. So we'll be making a number of other acquisitions and raising a big round of funding. And so with that, you know, as, as, the, as the, the scope gets bigger, there's, there's places for people to move. But I would say it's one of the biggest things we, we struggle with right now. We do a really elaborate um, survey of all of our employees every single year. I look at that as kind of my scorecard. And, um, and I mean, I, and I present it back to the entire employees and it's all the stuff that I'm doing wrong or we need to improve on. And one of the biggest things that we've gotten challenged on the last two years is how do I, you know, where's my growth path within, within MediaFly? Um, particularly because we, people don't leave us. So it's one of the big, big focus of ours. I and mean, we do, um, we pay for people to go to school now. We do a lot of things, you know, we bring in specialists to try and enrich people. And then one of the biggest things is just a commitment to hire from internal. So whenever, the, whenever possible, how do we help somebody move to a different slot? inside of it. I'm Zach Davis and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Punchkick Interactive. Punchkick Interactive builds custom software for a lot of fortune level brands, but also a number of mid-market brands. Um, everything we do, we do in-house, and we do all of the things that support the building of premium custom software, including user research, usability testing, and all that good stuff. I think one of the challenges that we anticipate at Punchkick is that while we work with a lot of fortune level brands, we also work with a lot of really fun, innovative mid-market brands who are often tempted by uh, leveraging white label products and some of these 
premium app services. And I think what a lot of our clients in that in, in those industries find is that those products aren't very scalable. Um, if features change along the way, their product breaks. And I think long-term, they're not a good investment. So one of the challenges we have is helping clients understand that building custom software doesn't have to cost a fortune and you can have a piece of software built for you by a really smart onshore team that understands your business and your needs and well documented and that piece of software can serve you for many years and can be very cost effective long term. So at Punchkick, we're really unique when it comes to our management style in that we run the company completely flat. We have no managers. In another in other words, we're all managers at Punchkick. So Everything we do, we're using the advice of our peers. And in fact, we have um, a process within our walls called the advice channel where we're turning to our peers and getting advice about any decision we're making and looping in as many people as needed. So for small decisions, it might be just a handful of people. For larger decisions, it might involve a much larger group. And so our punch kickers are completely driving the company and their advice their feedback and their experiences are what shape the future of the company. We have a punch kicker named Abby, who's just phenomenal. She came to punch kick as an account manager, meaning she was given two or three accounts and asked to grow those accounts. Well, as she did that, everyone around her noticed that she grew her accounts better than anyone. She was always thinking about customer service, how to write an email, how to anticipate our clients' needs, how to get in with their leadership teams to help really understand the pain points a client has. And over time, it became pretty common to say, ask Abby, ask Abby, ask Abby. So Abby made a case for herself to move out of an account management role and take a more holistic look at client success and client happiness at a, overall, like at a company level. And we were all so excited about that. And she's in that role today and she helps oversee all of our client happiness, all of the things that we're doing to make sure that we're delivering to our clients exactly what we've promised and going above and beyond. And so that's an example in a flat company of somebody saying, I see an opportunity and having the support of their peers and making that opportunity happen. So at Punchkick, we leverage the experience and skills of our team through the advice channel. So we're constantly asking people to think about how we can improve the business, how we can make a difference in the way we work. And so any decision that I'm gonna make, any decision that anyone at Punch Geek is gonna make, they're gonna use all the information available within the company and then use the advice channel to talk to their peers and start to get an understanding of people's sensitivity, their, their temperature towards the idea. And I find that when you do that in an open environment, the best ideas just rise to the top because it becomes less about forcing your idea through and more about just letting the right idea win because everybody's got an equal footing. Everybody has the, the opportunity to say their thoughts and their ideas.